Milling Through History presents Preventative Practices Saves the Revolution. From 1775 to 1782, there was an epidemic that ran throughout the entirety of North America. That epidemic was smallpox. For those who are unfamiliar, smallpox is a highly contagious disease with a 30% death rate. As such, if a person became infected with smallpox, they are actually contagious for up to 24 days. However, however, even with minor symptoms, it's important to understand that this person can still infect other people. And it does not have to simply be through face-to-face -face contact in the event there is any form of spit or if there is any form of sweat or even touching an object and then handing it off to somebody else can easily go ahead and transmit the disease. Now, how fast does something like this spread, you might wonder? Well, the answer is rather surprising. Beginning in 1775, the exact origin of the epidemic has never been determined. However, the disease was already raging through Boston during its siege by continental forces. Both British and American soldiers suffered from the disease, but the British were less affected due to the higher number of men who had immunity to it. In the South, many runaway slaves often caught the disease and died. The smallpox epidemic would reach New Orleans by 1778, then moved on to Texas, and finally down into Mexico in 1779. In 1780, cases were being recorded in New Mexico within the Pueblo settlements. And by 1782, the entire continent had been covered with the epidemic. During the American Revolution, though, George Washington understood the severity of smallpox, having been a survivor of the disease himself. The only way to go ahead and protect the army was through inoculation. However, it was not seen as very popular at the time, due to concerns of an inoculated person being able to infect other healthy people with the disease. Even during the Siege of Boston, Washington was ever presently minded of the fact that the disease was running rampant. So he had men who had already had smallpox go up to the front lines and maintain the American position while the British were still stuck within the city. By the winter of 1777 though, with the smallpox epidemic getting worse, Washington knew he needed to do something to help his army overcome this disease. His plan was to use hares, which had been infected with smallpox, onto his men, thus giving them a minor dose of the disease and having them be inoculated through this method and allowing this minor dose of smallpox run its course. Informing Congress of his plan, Washington would inoculate his men during the winter quarter period at Valley Forge, using this particular period of non-combat activity to allow the men to get sick, recover, and be back to fighting strength by the spring. His plan worked, and in 1778, Washington would lead his men into a successful engagement at the Battle of Monmouth. Other individuals who favored inoculations included both John and Abigail Adams, who themselves had been inoculated and made the practice seen as more acceptable within New England society. Thomas Jefferson and Benjamin Franklin advocated for the improvement of health conditions to prevent the further spread of smallpox. The standard tradition at the time had been to work on a cure for an epidemic as the event was going on instead of trying to come up with a cure and a plan well before any occurrence of a disease would happen. Even today, the anti-vaccine movement is seen as an echo to a time when people were wary of inoculations and the dangers it possessed. However, the inoculation of the American Army at Valley Forge helped to set the precedent for future vaccination movements, which included the end of polio, whooping cough, and other diseases which used to run rampant throughout the United States. Be sure to click like, share, and subscribe for future episodes of Milling Through History, and leave your comment below in order to give us more future episode ideas.